importance of knowing your stories and um, and being in relationship um, to to people in community. Next question will go to Dan Jones with NBC Radio. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. Um, we will uh, go to Ian Monroe. Um, hi, thank you. Um, I guess I just have one question about um, if you can give me a sense of what um, the response has been from uh, universities that have been, you know, having these discussions so far about like the idea of sort of citizenship um, versus, you know, other approaches to establishing identity. Uh, is that something you could address, please? Uh, definitely. And so universities are all in different places in relation to this dialogue and, um, and also in relation to creating processes um, that um, validate um, Indigenous citizenship. And um, so um, it is very um, clear that the Indigenous community has to be a part of that process and that Indigenous community members who are part of uh, this process have to be properly recognized and, and compensated. Um, so it was um, interesting to hear from the legal panel and, um, and the message there was that Indigenous citizenship is not an individual right uh, because it's dependent on the collective. Um, so that would be, again, the community and the nation decides, um, decides its membership. Um, so, you know, there is uh, importance when you hear um, that point of, um, of ensuring that, um, that Indigenous um, faculty, staff, students um, are, are verified um, in one way or another. Thank you for that question. Uh, we'll move over to uh, Jeff Leo with CBC. Oh, is Mike is not having Yes. You can add it to the chat if you like, Jeff, if you can't uh, if you can't get on. Okay, so it says um can you tell me the difference between yes. identity and citizenship and why is identity a problem? Um, so, um, you know, another point that, um, that, was, that was brought up was that, um, and, and this is connected, but it's not, con but, it, but it's also, you know, not strongly connected to the question, but, um, there, there is no privacy in citizenship related uh, validation. So um, again, um, it is uh, communities that will determine uh, their membership. And, and so, um, and, and identity is a lot more individual, even though there is a collective aspect of it. So identity is dependent upon um, commun community relationships. Um, and it's, it's dependent on um, land and territory. So all of that um, really does develop um, identity. And um, so communities have the um, responsibility of determining um, who their members are. And sometimes that may not be um, a, uh, an Indigenous person. 
Um, and um, it could be uh, someone that uh, has been adopted into the community um, by a family, but the nation recognize, recognizes uh, this individual. So there's a lot more um, complexity to membership um, than there is, uh, there is identity. The, um, the concept of identity um, is, is a problem because um, what's been happening lately, um, and as I've mentioned in other interviews, is that identity fraud has been happening for centuries. So this isn't a new issue. However, um, with um, especially after the, the TRC calls to action, um, there have been more space um, and place made for Indigenous peoples within, within post-secondary institutions. And so that may mean um, uh, scholarships uh, are, are available to Indigenous uh, students or faculty and, and, uh, or grants, um, designated seats for Indigenous students. Um, and with that, um, have been certain violations, um, um, fraudulent claims to, to indigeneity. And, um, and so um, with the increase of, of these opportunities, um, it seems uh, there, there has been an increase of people who are, who are claiming um, indigeneity. And indigeneity could could go as far back as ten or twelve um, generations, right? So there's there's no living um, person that um, that that you know some of these individuals can connect to. Um, so I'm looking at the number two there. I know that it's early days, but what do you hope to accomplish by the forum? Well, and are you, are you able to hear me there? I can. can you hear me now? Okay, good. Yeah. So I maybe just start with short term. Like, um, so you've got all these people. About how many people did you get together? About three hundred. Is that right? Um, I think at the top end, and I didn't ask today, but but yesterday um, we reached uh, three hundred and seventy-seven attendees. And can you just briefly? Uh, the attendees are who exactly? How did how did people get on the invite list? Um, through the um, National Indigenous University Senior Leaders Association, what we asked is um, for those leaders um, at, to send out invitations to their community, their Indigenous community. So that would be Indigenous faculty, students, staff, um, elders that work with the uh, elders and leaders that work with the with the university. Um, okay. Yeah. And then, and what is the, the short term? I mean, obviously, I mean, at the very least, everybody's hearing from each other and so can learn from each other. But what do you hope to take out of this in the short term? Is there like some sort of uh, goal that you have at the end of this? Or is this just mostly a good opportunity to get together? Um, there, people are coming together because um, they, they do want to see an outcome. Um, from this forum. And so um, there have been breakout rooms um, and we've been taking notes, um, capturing um, the, the panel um, messages and also um, having, um, having breakout sessions with specific questions um, about next steps, um, about um, you know, practical and pragmatic um, solutions um, and also providing examples of, of um, where they're seeing um, policies or practices that are effective um, and that are working. And, um, and so at the end of this, uh, at the end of today, what we will do is um, we will um, begin analyzing um, the information and looking for themes and uh, a report um, will be made public. 
And of course, um, we're also asking um, the attendees um, how they um, see um, future forums. We do know that um, at some point, um, this will be opened up to, um, to other organizations um, and uh, also to non-Indigenous people. Um, and sorry, just one, one final thing. So, I mean, the biggest challenge, I think, like universities, I think, are wrestling with this whole topic and trying to figure out what to do. On the one hand, they don't want to insert themselves into the role of, you know, being the ones who determine identity or citizenship. But on the other hand, they don't want to be giving opportunities to people who aren't Indigenous uh, when it's designated for them. Uh, for Indigenous people. So what do you think long term, like what can you actually do here that would sort of both address the the problem and the situation universities find themselves in and then and then Indigenous people, broadly speaking, find themselves in like and I mean, I guess I'm not asking you for a specific policy prescription, but you know, what are the, what are the range of possibilities or is there already some sort of consensus building, do you think? I, I think, um, you know, there have been um, certain um, themes that, that have arisen um, from my perspective. Um, and uh, so what I've been hearing is that self, um, self-identification isn't working, right? And, um, and the one reason that it hasn't worked is because it goes against the um, the that relationality that that community connect, connection that most Indigenous peoples are um, are very familiar with. Um, as I mentioned again in other interviews, we've navigated these spaces of of um, citizenship and, and identity for centuries. And we, we talk about our family connections when we meet each other. And, um, and so with, uh, with universities, um, and this is, I feel applicable to other sectors uh, because you know, those issues are there too. And we've, we've been hearing that um, there's it's important to to engage the community and actually to look at the systems that um, that that um, to evaluate the systems that are existent and start making changes um, and um, even you know the the uh, the application forms um, that um, that basically where people would identify um, their, their indigeneity, but you would have a, another checkbox where a person could, um, could give permission, uh, for the university to, uh, to investigate, um, and check up on their, um, their, their community, um, their community membership. Um, so it's, it's adding, I think, um, layers of, um, of accountability, but um, it's also asking um, uh, in individuals to, uh, to share their story. And um, even though there are Métis cards and status cards, um, the, um, there was also um, dialogue on the importance of, of uh, lived experiences uh, uh, and um, the knowledge systems that that um, um, some indigenous um, individuals have acquired over time, right? So um, that combination of of that that experience of of you know engaging indigenous knowledge systems with um, in real ways and and having these lived experiences, I think. Are are very important um, in in ensuring that the person who is being hired um, has has those those very very important um, qualifications. So there's the I think the the long term implications are that um, um, it it may be become more um, difficult for. Um, 
for some people to to claim indigeneity, um, but it will ensure that um, it will ensure that these processes will ensure that um, indigenous uh, peoples are um, are rightly um, identified and, st and stepping into these uh, positions. Thank you, Jeff, for that question. Uh, we'll move next to uh, Radio Canada. Radio Canada, do you have a question for Dr. Ottman? That might be our acquisitions department, um, okay. the CBC RADCAN. <laughs> okay, uh, so we'll go to Michelle Allen. Thank you. Um, these processes you're describing, they all sound constructive, but I'm curious about people who are not in the process of applying for a job or you know, acceptance at these schools. What about people who are already embedded in these institutions who have these um, allegations of not having as uh, concrete ties? Would it, would it not be difficult to enact these processes with the people that are being investigated in these institutions in power? Yeah, that was part of the of the dialogue. Well, you know, to uh, a small degree, I think, um, in in that respect, um, one um, institution was considering um, considering um, looking for the proper word here, but um, also including policies that would um, would address um, these prior instances. Um, so, you know, again, um, that is um, the, because um, a lot of this work is contextual, right? Um, the issue is, um, is a general issue. It's a, it's a national issue. Um, but the responses uh, to the issue is contextual, right? And, and so there is that, um, I think, respectful engagement that universities have to have with the Indigenous community. And, um, and so in that instance, um, you know, there may be universities that, um, that, that choose to, um, you know, to create, um, um, policies and processes that that address um, prior um, prior instances, and um, and then there may be universities that that just focus on um, on new hires or perhaps um, you know um, situations that are related to um, or future situations that are connected to funding and and scholarship. That makes sense. In terms of the best practices, you mentioned earlier the example of maybe adding another box that uh, allows the university permission to contact the nations people belong to. Can you give any other examples of the kind of best practices that were discussed as possible solutions? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned again, um, some universities are, well, I think. Um, from what I'm, what I know, and what I'm hearing, um, most universities are engaging the indigenous community, and um, and also looking at um, there was dialogue connected to uh, um, amending and changing uh, collect collective bargaining agreements, and um, and also university standards to recognize. Um, Indigenous methodologies and pedagogies, and um, and um, these um, distinct hiring practices, um, and um, 
And there is also the issue of um, of the uh, there's also the challenge of Indigenous faculty complement in general. So um, there are few Indigenous faculty members across the country, and um, and so um, you know with universities that are that are um, competing for Indigenous faculty and students and staff, um, the, the processes um, to um, hiring um, or admitting um, Indigenous students um, may need to be strengthened. Um, and uh, so hiring um, policies are um, in many cases going to be revisited and um, and again, you know, there was a strong message that, uh, and I just uh, elaborated uh, upon it a little while ago, that one size doesn't fit all. Um, that you know, the solutions need to be contextual because Indigenous communities need to take ownership of um, ownership of of these processes in collaboration with, uh, with the university. And so there needs to be that proper recognition. And as I mentioned earlier, compensation of community members because the capacity in our communities is just not there. And um, the resourcing uh, to do this kind of work is not there. So um, that is something that may need to be addressed um, um, at, you know, at many, um, at many levels, um, you know, where is the where is the um, the funding support going to come from to engage in this kind of work? And you know, it's important work that's going to benefit um, all Canadian organizations. Just to clarify, when you mention um, these community members who will be compensated, uh, does that look like hiring a consultant or, or, or something on, on the university's part to help them make those decisions? I would think it would be more than a, a, a consultant. Um, we're very diverse. Um, we're a very diverse community, and this is uh, the reason um, that, you know, the one size fits all approach um, was um, was discussed. And um, so if it's if if it's um, engaging community, then it has to be uh, members from the local community, the local indigenous communities. Um, and, um, and, you know, um, creating um, processes where all would um, agree, that all could agree upon. Um, so, um, yeah, and, and a consultant, um, I didn't hear anyone talk about a consultant. So it was more of a collective Indigenous uh, collaborative approach. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, we'll, we'll go to uh, Leah with La Presse. Hi, yes. Um, hi. Um, so I was wondering here in Quebec, um, each university kind of have their has their own admission process for Indigenous students and fac faculty staff. And I was wondering if you think if you hope that in the long term, uh, we have kind of a unified process over the, the universities for the to uh, validate or, um, you know, for, for the, for the admis, admission, admission, uh, sorry, my English is not, it's not the best, but uh, to, uh, for the students and uh, faculty staff that are Indigenous. Thank you. There may be, um, there may be, I think, general provincial approaches to this. Um, and, um, and I think what's happening now um, is that universities are, um, are looking to each other um, to see what the current wise practices are uh, related to this. And, um, and so, and also at the same time, um, considering the, the local, um, the regional 
indigenous communities that are that that um, these that surround these universities, um, and um, so that that is that is key. Um, a standardized um, approach to admission um, that was uh, was again something that wasn't uh, discussed. Uh, a national approach to admis- admission was was uh, was not was not di- discussed. But you know there are certain themes um, that that arose, and I have mentioned some of them in that. Um, and that is um, related to the idea of citizenship um, and who claims you as an ind- indigenous person. Who claims you? Um, and um, and so um, and for those that are um, new and are returning home, um, it's very important that they connect and or reconnect to family and community to learn their stories, uh, to, to learn their traditions, their, their, their cultural practices and, and languages. Thank you. I think there was media queue that was left. Uh, if there's anything from, from that outlet. Don't believe so. Uh, so that that's that's all of our our questions for Dr. Ogman. Uh, thank you all for joining us uh, this sorry. afternoon. Oh, sorry, did sorry. I hear someone? Uh, uh, yeah, it's Sharon oh. Ryan with Windspeaker. I have a follow up to what Dr. Ogman just said. So somebody's returning home; they're new. They're returning home. He says it's very important that they reconnect or connect to their family and community to learn their stories, their traditions, their cultural practices. Now, if they're a student, and this, they, does that mean, and if they're strained from their home community, but they're still Indigenous or First Nations, does that mean they can't apply for Indigenous scholarships if they're estranged from their community? No, not, no, not at all. And I think, um, you know, there's a lot of complexity to this. And, um, and so there's, um, there are already um, registration processes for, um, for Métis citizenship and uh, for status, for status Indians, right? And so, um, and, you know, in some cases, um, well, in, and I, I know some of those cases where people uh, don't have strong connections to community. Um, so there is this, I think, reciprocal, um, um, reciprocal relationality that, that was, um, that was encouraged, um, by, um, by some of the, uh, speakers. Um, and, um, so, you know, there is benefit, um, to, uh, if, if you are going to, um, benefit from your indigeneity, then, um, then there is that responsibility um, to, um, to know your stories, know your people's stories and, and traditions. Um, and that may not mean, um, um, that may look different for, for uh, individuals, right? Um, it may mean connecting with um, with immediate family members. It uh, and it may mean um, you know stepping fully into your community. Um, so it's um, you know the the point was that um, if you are going to um, um, benefit in one way or another. Um, from your indigeneity, then there's that reciprocal. Um, um, I'm just trying to think of some of the panel members. Um, it's kind of like uh, one of them said, uh, "What are you going to bring to the table?" Um, you know that reciprocity um, is is important. And how do we encourage? Um, how do we encourage um, some of our indigenous students who may be estranged? to learn their stories. So, you know, this is, um, a lot of this can be done in kindness, right? And, um, and that was another thing that, um, that was talked about. 
um, is, is dignity and kindness. Um, so I, ho I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, uh, so we will wrap this up now again. Thank you all the media for joining us today. And we will keep you posted on any future uh, events in regard to this topic. So thank you.